For all its flaws, the main one being that it's about a quarter of the size it should be. The railway network in Northern Ireland is at least centralised, so it's technically possible to get from one part to the other on the same train. But it wasn't always like that. At the height of Victorian railway mania, there were three competing companies in the northeast of Ireland, each with grand termini in different parts of Belfast, and all opened in 1848. To the north of the town centre, on York Road, was the Belfast and Northern Counties Railway, later known as the Northern Counties Committee, which served places like Ballymena, Ballycastle, Randallstown, Derry, Portrush and Larne. Deliberately built two miles out of town to save money, the terminus was nevertheless a grand design from the pen of Charles Lanyon, the man behind Queen's University, Crumlin Road Jail and the Antrim Coast Road. The railway, as well as the lavish station hotel for new arrivals, encouraged the growth of the new suburbs of North Belfast. Meanwhile, at Queen's Quay on the east bank of the Lagan was the Belfast and County Down Railway's terminus, initially only carrying passengers to Hollywood and back, but in the fullness of time serving the likes of Bangor, Cumber, Donacadee and Newcastle. And in the town centre itself was the Ulster Railway Station on Great Victoria Street. Its grand terminus was designed by John Godwin, the company's chief engineer. In time, the Ulster Railway was bought out by the Great Northern Railway of Ireland, who ran trains to places like Lisburn, Moira, Banbridge and Hillsborough, as well as, latterly, the Enterprise Service to Dublin. All of these buildings reflected the prominence of railway travel at the time. They were designed by the leading architects of the day to showcase the financial clout of the railway companies, but they were standalone entities. This fragmented approach is nothing new. You can still see this in London today, for example, where the big mainline stations like Paddington, Euston and King's Cross were, and still are, the termini for different railway companies. And although the Belfast Street Tramways Company ran trams from York Road and Queen's Quay to get commuters into town, a more fundamental solution was needed. And 12 years after the London Metropolitan Railway opened to link all the separate railway stations up, we had a similar idea over here when the Belfast Central Railway was opened in 1875. The new railway, shown here in red, provided a link between the Great Northern Railway, shown in blue, and the Belfast and County Down, shown in green. It actually linked all three of the termini, but the issue was that the track between the Central and the Northern Counties was a dockside goods railway and not really up to the task of carrying passengers, meaning they could only ever go as far north as Queensbridge, not to be confused with Queen's Quay across the river. Maybe because of this, ticket sales were low, and after only 10 years, the Central Railway closed to passengers. This meant that Ormo and Windsor were shut and that County Down commuters could no longer cross the Lagan by train. But who knows, maybe the trams were quicker anyway. The Central did stay open for goods traffic, with Queen's Bridge remaining in use as a dockside hub. This is the site today at the back of the waterfront hall. By the 1950s, rail travel had been superseded by private car ownership across the UK and Ireland. In Britain, Dr Beeching was swinging his scythe and over here things were no different. The railways were nationalised in 1948 and transferred to the control of the Ulster Transport Authority. Closures were coming. The first of the big three railways to suffer was the Belfast and County Down. Already in need of serious investment, a major accident between Sydenham and Ballymacarrett Junction in 1945 and the resulting compensation bill left the company on its knees. Less than two years into the Ulster transport era, in 1950, the county lost all its rail except the branch to Bangor. The Northern Counties Committee was next, followed by the Great Northern. Although none were totally closed, only their more profitable lines were kept. And finally, the Central Railway itself was closed and the lines were removed in the 1960s. This resulted in a rather miserable time for rail travel in Northern Ireland, not helped by obvious wider political and economic problems. Queen's Quay and York Road were still active stations, but only operated one isolated line each, to Bangor and Larne respectively. Great Victoria Street fared the best, but was still a shadow of its former self, especially when the majority of it was knocked down to make room for the new Europa Hotel. All three were allowed to slowly fall into disrepair until they were beyond saving, and in time 
all three would close. But amidst the misery of the Troubles came an echo from the past. Northern Ireland Railways had been set up in 1968, taking over from the old Ulster Transport Authority. It had a much more pro-rail attitude than its predecessor, and someone at the top realised that the old Central Railway would have been quite useful after all if it had been used properly. So, over 100 years after it had first opened, it was relayed, and what's more, with a slick new station to link up what were now just known as the Lisburn and Bangor lines on either side of the River Lagan. On the 12th of April 1976, Queen's Quay and Great Victoria Street were closed, and the new Belfast Central Station was opened. And it's been there ever since, with Tannock and City Hospital, opened in 1976 and 1986 respectively, taking the places, roughly, of the old Ormo and Windsor stations. But what of York Road and the Larne Line, still isolated from the rest of the network? Well, in 1995, the new Dargan Bridge, the longest bridge in Ireland, incidentally, connected it to the rest of the network and Northern Ireland's centralised railway system was born. In the same year, Great Victoria Street was reopened in a shopping mall bearing the name of its former operator after the authorities realised how handy it is to have a train station in the city centre rather than on a windy bridge half a mile out of town. And what of these lovely old stations today? The original station building at York Road had been crippled during the Belfast Blitz of April and May 1941 and was replaced with a much more prosaic affair that in turn was heavily damaged during the Troubles. That was closed for good in 1992 and replaced by York Gate a short distance to the south on the new connecting line and nothing more than a suburban stop. The old station itself is mostly gone but the train service depot next to the M2 motorway is still in use and this building is the wall of its old engine shed. As I said, Queen's Quay was closed in 1976 on the same day Belfast Central opened for passengers and the station building was raised to the ground not long after, although some parts of the site, like the train shed, were there for many more years. These days, the only clue on the site that it ever existed is the name Station Street, although until very recently this subway sign on Ann Street did its best to point innocent tourists in the wrong direction. I couldn't find a Station Street sign, but I did get this shot of the one for Scrabble Street, named after the hill in Newton Nords from which the valuable scrubbo stone was quarried and brought to be distributed from the docks. Thankfully, rail travel has had a bit of a revival in recent times. In 2003, Northern Ireland replaced its ancient rolling stock with modern trains, meaning that the halcyon days of missing your station because you couldn't open the manual door in time were a thing of the past. The company celebrated its 50th anniversary in 2018. The same year, a central station was renamed Lanyon Place, finally silencing critics of its name and removing the last lingering link to the railway's origins. Next time I'll be back to my old favourite, the Belfast and County Down Railway at Knock. I'll see you then. <laughs>